great family. Uh, welcome back to the Sound 40 Project. I'm here today with Matt Skolton. Um, this will be our last uh, installment of uh, Sound 40 Project before we head into the Advent season. We'll take a little break from Sound 40 during that period and then, uh, and then we'll be starting up again after that. So, Matt, thanks for agreeing to join me on Sound 40 Project. Appreciate sure. It. Yeah. So why don't, we, uh, why don't we just start at the beginning? Where'd you grow up? What did that look like for you? And start the story there. All right. Um, I am a Grand Rapids resident um, my entire life. I grew up in Brookside Christian Reformed Church. Uh, went to Millbrook Christian School, uh, Grand Rapids Christian School. Calvin College, uh, LaGrave is my second church. Oh, wow. Um, and if you're doing the math in your head, yes, that's a five mile radius of each other. So wow. So I continue to be within five miles of every place I've been at school and every place I've lived. Five miles. Five miles. Wow. So, um, so in that five miles, Talk about um, who are the people who helped influence uh, faith in you. In you, yeah. Yeah. So, um, parents obviously were were very instrumental in faith nurturing, uh, setting expectations, uh, encouragement. Uh, but that followed to uh, youth leaders at Brookside. Okay. Uh, through youth group, uh, the ministers there. I have strong memories of my teachers at Millbrook especially being um, firm and confident in their faith okay. uh, growing up. Um, <clears throat> and throughout Christian High, Calvin, uh, sports coaches. Yeah. Um, had some very good sports coaches. Um, and even engineering school at Calvin. Had some very good mentors okay. and leaders there. So is there any particular, uh, I don't know, conversation or, or occasion or uh, event that you can recall that was particularly meaningful in your faith development um, from those folks? Yeah, a couple that, that stick out. My sixth grade teacher, Mr. Brower, okay. started his class uh, that year with a very strong faith statement. He said, this is what I believe, and this is how I've introduced my class for, I think at that point it was 30 years in a row. Wow. Um, so that was the, the politely insistent, this is what I believe and why. Yeah. Um, I had uh, uh, baseball coaches um, that would hand out Bible verses. Um, and it was always coaching within the context of we're here to play baseball, but we're also here to wow. uh, be Christians. So <clears throat> your growing up experience, you had people along the way, teachers, co coaches, just mm -hmm. really being intentional with their own, sharing their own faith with you and, yeah. and your classmates and teammates yeah. and so forth. Yeah. So I, I have to ask, if you were at Brookside, there's is there any chance that you crossed paths with Bob Grissing when he was youth pastor there? Ooh, um, Bob has been here, I think, longer than I've been alive. I think that's so. Uh, I'll have to ask my parents about <laughs> <Okay>. that. <laughs> it's, it's possible. That's right. I had to get that in there. That's so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, wow, that's fascinating. I find that fascinating, just growing up then in that five mile radius. Because I think sometimes God uses sort of out of the ordinary circumstances in our lives that sort of prod our faith or challenge our faith or, uh, or <clears throat> sort of help us grow up and accept faith as our own our parents faith our teachers faith as our own so is there is there any any event any people along the way that helped you kind of adopt christian faith 
apart from your parents' faith, to sort of differentiate it from your parents' faith? So I think the first time I actually sat back and reflected outwardly. Okay. Um, you know, growing up, uh, the focus was sports, school, music, uh, you know, church, yep. and, and doing all that within, you know, that context. But uh, it wasn't until I got to Calvin that I was encouraged to think out, outside of, you know, my direct circle. Okay. And, you know, how, I'm, how am I going to take these skills that I've learned at Calvin and, and you know, be in the world but not of the world? Okay. Um, so it was engineering professors, uh, one of which attends here, okay. that said, hey, you're going to, uh, you know, be fairly successful. You're going to be asked to lead. Um, and really, how, how are you going to go about doing that? Um, so it started that, that outward thinking okay. of, uh, you know, who, who am I going to be? Uh, and the benefit of growing up within that circle with all those mentors, uh, it allowed me a, a person in particular. You know, if I want to be a baseball coach, who should I emulate? Well, that was a really good coach. If I want to be a, a youth leader, you know, for, for scouts, yeah. uh, I had youth leaders that I could say, you know, those were, were excellent leaders. What were their qualities yeah. and, and how can I emulate uh, those people? Yeah. Wow. So <clears throat> the power of mentoring and the power of just adults sort of helping to shepherd the faith in younger folks was influential for you? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. At, at, at every stage, I think I, I can look at somebody in my past that has been a mentor, whether they knew it or not, and they, they have made an impact where, um, you know, how do I want to handle myself? How do I want to grow? I can look at somebody and, and say, well, that was a good yeah. resource. That was a good example. Thank you.